Hey guys, Gore here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got the exciting start to a new series that is really going to be upping the ante when it comes to helping new players learn squad. I can't take all the credit for this one. The idea came from a comment that Rib Spreader left on a video, so a huge shout out to him for bringing this up. The idea behind these videos is simple. Many of the new player guides out there currently, some of mine included, tell you what to do and how to do it, but they rarely ever touch on the why. Cool, you know how to place down your ammo bag, but why should you only place it down for your anti-tank kits in certain situations? You know how to dig up a friendly hab once it's placed, but why did your squad leader place it 100 meters from the radio, and why didn't we unload all the supplies? The list goes on and on of important aspects and details that go into becoming a successful squad player that so many of us, myself included, gloss over frequently and never take the time to explain. So how am I gonna go about explaining all the whys and why nots of squad? Well, if you don't like my voice, I'd click away now because I'm gonna be doing full game live commentaries explaining every last detail that I have the breath and time to expand upon. These videos are not gonna be short, so I'm gonna do my best to timestamp each episode with the general ideas that I'm talking about at different stages of the video. While I do hope you enjoy this new type of video, I will say these games may not be the most action-packed every time, but they will be bolstered with important information that I think will be incredibly helpful to many of you. Before I leave you all, about 83% of you who watch my videos aren't subscribed, so if you enjoy the content here, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're watching this video within a few hours of release, I'm live streaming over on Twitch right now. Come on by for a bit or just to say hello. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, I'm out. All right, right from the get-go. I'm probably going to try to join one of the first couple of squads made. Just going to join this guy's squad. Uh, we'll see what role we're going to take. AT's getting taken. See if Medic needs to be taken. We'll take Medic. So the whole idea behind joining one of the first two squads made, or first few squads made, is usually the people that are doing that are more willing to SL. Sometimes you run into issues uh, where like the seventh or eighth squad made. Those are the people that are like, shit, well, I guess I'll SL. So getting in with the first couple of squads is usually going to net you a lot better uh, communication. Uh, but the reason you might see someone go a 1800 build, 1200 ammo, or you might see 1200 build, 1800 ammo, it's usually because someone's going to put down a hab and an ammo crate, which costs 600 build. And then they either are doing 1800 build um, to try to get three fobs down, or they're doing 1200 build to try to get two fobs down with maximum ammo. Uh, me personally, I don't really do that that often. Uh, I usually just go half and half because it allows me to get two fobs down. Uh, I like having a little bit of extra build. Sometimes I'll go like 1600 build or no, 1400 build, 1600 build, or 1600 ammo, sorry. Uh, so that I can oh, get one ammo crate oh. at the edge of the uh, build radius as well. Because usually I'll put one right next to the hab, and then whatever our closest contact is, so, so I'll drop one there so that if people do have to come back, I'm it's at the closest anymore. point for them to get ammo and they don't have to run an extra 100 meters. Then, But we are playing medic today, anyway, which means that we're going to be yeah. hanging back a little bit. We are the optic medic, uh, which means we're a lot uh, better off against infantry. If, uh, one lady, uh, Could I also snag a fire team if you have a second? Of course. Thank you. So one of the easiest ways to relieve a little bit of pressure from your squad leader is having experienced players within within your fire teams. And also just assigning... So he should assign everyone to a fire team. I'm not going to nitpick him. Um, but assigning everyone to a fire team, if someone else is in Bravo fire team and they need to say, hey, squad lead, uh, I need to mark you know, a hab on the map or something like that, uh, it then allows me to pass the fire team lead to them instead of the squad leader having to pull up his command menu like this and pass on. So he might be throwing some different people in. Driving lodgies when you first start out in squad, by the way, is one of the best ways to learn maps. You learn where you're safe, where you're not. You learn different routes. Uh, you learn kind of how the map is laid out. You also learn that you can go places a lot faster in a vehicle than you can on foot. Uh, so that's another good aspect of it. But it can be really beneficial. I know it's not that fun for people to play truck simulator and just drive around and do whatever. Uh, but it can be. It's First of all, it's super helpful for your team. And second of all, it's super helpful for you to learn the game. And I always take this little route right here because you can crank it down the road instead of going down the, uh, the whatever route. So we can get up here quick. Another thing, like you just learn kind of like the routes of where you can get places quicker. And that can help out quite a bit. 
Because the faster we get to this location, the faster we can get to the next location. Because he probably just wants to drop a backup fob or have someone for the back cap, whatever it may be. So what we're seeing right now is it looks like he's going to drop a backup fob. Radio, hold on. Uh, I don't actually understand. So again, I'm not going to nitpick. I would not do this. He's wasting a lot of valuable time at the start of games. Um, the, the first probably five minutes of the game can kind of dictate uh, everything that's going to happen. Don't unload everything, guys. There's no need. So this gives me a good opportunity to explain the things he's doing wrong. So our first point is Fob Connolly. Uh, if it's going down this east side of the map, uh, if it cuts back to the west, it's probably not going to cut northwest. It's either going to cut here or it's going to cut over here, maybe to Radio Tower. But if it's already going Connolly, I can kind of predict, and maybe I'm completely wrong, uh, already kind of predict that it's probably going to stay along this southern route. Um, of course, not everyone. Oh, shit. I was, I was saying that shit in fucking local comms. Yo, no yep, one yep. said anything? That's fucking awkward. All right, boys, get back in the lodge. Hopefully he didn't hear me talking shit about him. <laughs> Fuck me, man. All right, from there, we're going to fucking support... <laughs> Bro, well, my face is red as fuck right now. Oh, uh. <laughs> Shit. Anywho, we're just driving along. I'm definitely not feeling awkward. Okay, anyway. So, like I said, the next point did not go northwest. <laughs> it went southwest. Yeah, squad seven's going to hit really fucking hard, so we're going to go over there and help him out. So this is where I'm going to put some of my input in. Um, when it does come down south here, it usually stays south. So even if we go like south of squad five, that might be a decent spot. Up on the hill. Right, but I think the enemy's uh, fucking coming from the west side. So that's you know that's another big mistake. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. Another big mistake is people, people dictate what they do based uh, on where their enemies are. And yes... South, so. You should also you should always kind of influence your decisions based on where your enemies are. But his whole idea is enemies are there. That means there's people there to fight, or there, there's a reason they're there. Uh, All right. And that's not always the best idea. Nope. Oh shit! What happened? That's a tow. It's probably a BMP up on the hill. I'm getting behind this hill. Something up here. Yeah, you might be able to drop a radio. You might be close enough to the edge here. Yeah, you can probably get something just up to our uh, up to our west. I can stop here. Yeah, there's a BMP somewhere up on that southern hill. All right, let's go. I'm just gonna mark that. So with how quickly that tow got out, it could be an emplaced um, emplaced tow, uh, but more likely it's the BMP way way more likely it's the bmp and the bmp loves to come out of main here and stay along this road and then just post up right here and he's got eyes on the entire map yeah that's why i said that i kind of know hey bring the lodge up a little bit more yeah yeah coming it's struggling in the first gear it's all good it's all good don't worry about it just move a little bit to your left Come on. All right, come on, dude. Gotta get it down. BTR coming up. Oh, he's. Oh, shit. Go ahead, unload it. He threw that in a terrible spot. I would, I would do a lodgy run right now, but I think I'm the squad's only medic, so I can't do that. Just gonna park this down the hill. Um. Enemy BMP south. Where my AT at? There's one of them. If I can leave, mark the, mark the BMT or whatever the fuck. Is that an ammo crate? No, those are boxes. He's coming out the mountain. Oh. He's coming out the mountain. God. This is, Hell. this is an awkward spot. This is a really awkward spot. We're going to get annihilated here. He, he rushed the situation too much. So, again, we're, we're explaining why people are doing things. Um, he placed the radio up here and I think... 
he, he was just under the presumption that the hab should always be in front of the radio. In most scenarios, yes, you don't want your radio closer to the enemy than your hab. But in this exact situation, I would have thrown up some sort of fortification in front of this so they couldn't see it and then drop the hab back behind the hill. Because right now we're super limited in our in our approaches. And what I mean by that is we're coming off the hab. We're going to be under fire probably from the south and southeast. So we have to run backwards and we're, we're just going to get slaughtered. Okay, so it looks like we're dropping back to defense, which is good. I'm going to try to make sure I don't hot mic again. It always happens if you're holding, like if you're unloading something from a vehicle holding F and then you also press your talk key. That'll cause it to stick. I don't understand why. I'm also in the death seat right now, so I'm going to try to get out of this seat where you're standing up next to the supplies. So moral of this story right here. And I know, you know, if you're if you're watching this and you're new, you're not going to have a whole lot of input to give to your squad leader. Um, but you don't want to just think about the current situation. We drop a hab here. We're safe right now. We want to think in, in terms of future. We want to say, OK, in 10 minutes from now, if they get a machine gun emplacement looking die? right here, I'm are we going to be there. screwed? And the answer is yes, because within I mean, within a minute of us placing that there's a tiger out here, there's a BMP. There's, there's a, whole, there's a whole lot of stuff going on that's going to just pin that hab down. And we have to run down the front side of a hill that has zero cover. So our team will probably use it. But honestly, this radio should have been dug down to allow our team to get a better, uh, better fob up. So now we're sitting on defense. I'm going to try to stay not as far forward as possible. Right, boys, um, because I am the medic, I want to make sure that I'm not the furthest forward. Uh, there's times where you have to sacrifice your own enjoyment. I, I mean, because I obviously I'd enjoy the game more if I, you know, push out to the edge of the point and I was sniping people from long distance. But that as the medic, that's not where my team needs me. My team needs me closest to where all of our infantry is. And so running away is not a good idea. Right, squad, so good. I'm going to stay in and amongst the squad. I'm going to make sure everyone's healed up. I'm going to make sure people aren't down for too long. It does look like we have a second medic now. Yeah, we do. Cool. So that does give me a little bit of freedom. Can you repeat? Uh, we did right, lose our fob on anything. radio tower. They're at Bravo, so we might have infantry contacts coming from the west. Yeah, watch that shit. Good shit. Oh. Enemy low, so again, just enemy using, enemy. always having your map open. So a lot of the times I tell people, always have your map open. Give me a second. I always encourage people to have your map open. Well, why do you have your map open? Well, because you can acquire information. While we were driving back, I saw that that hab was disabled, meaning they were digging down or in, in proximity of the hab. Um, once I saw it go away, that means that that infantry is now looking for their next mission. What is their next closest mission? Well, their next closest mission or next possible is our defense point. So more likely than not, I'd say a 90% chance that we're going to have infantry contacts coming from the West. How many? Well, they took out a full squad. I was also paying attention to my map when they were taking them out. They were, you know, they could barely get off their halves, so it was definitely more than just two or three. So I'm going to guess that we have a full infantry squad coming from our west side. So I'm going to go ahead and just position myself to the west side. We already took Jirzara, or neutralized, so we should be able to push on here soon. But I am going to position here just in case. This is not only an early warning sign to my squad, because if I get shot, that means people are west and they're close west. I think they're taking that point, so... It also allows me to slow them down a little bit yeah, if I need to, but we should be fine. Let's go. Let's go to radio tower. Let's go fuck them up. Uh, they don't really have anything for Jazara, so if they end up getting pushed off that, we're going to get screwed here on defense. True. So, it's, I mean, it's... Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything over there. I don't see anybody walking around on radio tower, so it's... It's a 600 meter run yeah. to possibly see nothing. Again, I'm not trying to tell my squad what to do. I'm just trying to give like that that input that like, hey, yeah, you guys, you know, think that there's some people over here. You know, you take the the two three minutes to run over there. There's nothing there. Well, now you're completely out of position. And there's people up on the ridge line. You're completely out of position because you wanted to go shoot some things. 
So we're still just hanging out on the point. Now that my squad's occupied the west side, I'm not sitting on the west side. I know I'm the medic. I can get over there if I need to. People always have more than five seconds before they bleed out. Let's start going. So. Let's get in this lodgy. Um. If you guys want to hang out here for a second, I can run the lodgy back and get supplies so we don't all have to go back. Yeah, that's fine. This is a pretty good idea. <laughs> And then for anybody that doesn't know, up to our northeast, there's like a little repair station symbol. You can actually get supplies from that. You don't have to go all the way back to Maine. If you ever run into Lodgy in the future. A lot of people don't know that. The rest of us has moved to the next point. That's fine. Then moving on, I'm just going to go get supplies. No one else is going to do it. I know I'm the medic. I know I should be with my squad. But if the squad leader... The squad leader doesn't even... Doesn't even want to get. I don't even think he was gonna get supplies. I think he was just gonna grab the lodgy and start driving forward, and then just hope some supplies would get shit out of nowhere. So in my guides, I say keep the lodgy running. But why do we keep our lodgy running? Well, supplies are of the utmost importance in this game. If you do not have ammo supply, your AT is not getting resupplied. You're not gonna have things to take out enemy Vix. Uh, your medics don't have bandages, all that stuff. If you don't have build supply and you're not putting down repair stations, and you don't have, you know, any sort of uh, emplacements up, yeah, you're going to be right. a lot more vulnerable. Your vehicles are going to have to go all the way back to Maine to get repaired. So this is why we try to keep supplies running. Choppers are obviously the best way to do that, but on Kohat, with how many toes can be placed in high positions and cut off huge, huge parts of the map, you okay, want to make chopper. sure that your, your ground vehicles are running. So... Although I'm sacrificing the fact that I'm a medic to go do this, it's still really, really, really important to make sure supplies keep coming. Because right now, they all left Lower Jazara and they don't have a fob on it. Okay, so they just marked... Again, I have my map open all the time. Why am I doing that? Because I'm always getting information. Information is of the utmost importance in this game. I'm checking my... like it's. It almost looks like I'm a goldfish that's forgetting what I'm looking at every five seconds. But in the time that I had gotten to that repair station to get supplies and then pull my map back, map back up, these had been placed. I don't know if these helmet marks and that toe mark is accurate, but if it is and I go south, I'm dead. So the fact that I keep checking my map, I'm seeing if people are dying, I'm seeing if habs are being taken down, I'm trying to just gain situational awareness 24-7. If you want to get better at this game, you need to have situational awareness in every single situation. The best way to do that is with the things already on the map. When, you're, when your teammates get killed, they turn to a light blue. Do I have anybody that's dead on the map? So my teammate right here, this guy is downed. I know that they have close contact. He wouldn't be down if they didn't. So I need to, to dictate what I'm doing based off the, the things that I can acquire. So the route I take in here, it's not going to be pretty. And I actually don't know, entirely know what I'm going to do right now. I have the Lodgy coming in. Are you guys in contact right now? Yeah, just, yeah. And um, from what? Stay back for a little bit and then uh, fucking small fire on the mountain. Copy. We are losing the cap, vehicle, so it might be worth it yeah, just to drop back to Nazrat. So... Again, opening up my map to see where this is at. We're about 70% to neutral. Once they go neutral on that, we have no chance to double neutral. Also, I don't think I've ever explained what double neutral is in a video. It's, it's exactly what it sounds like. You neutralize your own attack point. They neutralize your defense point. It takes two minutes to cap both sides. So it takes two minutes to neutralize, two minutes to cap. If you get caught anywhere in that four minutes where your defense point also goes neutral while you're neutraling theirs... That's a double neutral. You then have to He's recapture your defense point before you can proceed to capture theirs. This is one of those times where even if he told me to, to push forward, I might say not a good idea. I try to always listen to my squad leader. I try to do exactly what he tells me to do, but there are occasions where you sometimes have to know better. Yeah, so we're neutral on that, so there's no reason for us to be up there. With, with us not being in a contestable position, uh, go back to the previous point. If you're not already in a contestable position, you're, you're not going to get there in those two minutes that you have. 
especially in this situation where they have to cross open ground. They've got infantry up on the hilltop. They've got vehicles. They're getting hit from multiple directions. In a better situation, maybe. What they really need to do is get mortars down. Mortars reign supreme on any map that you have to cross any sort of open ground. So as we go through this, I hope I'm, I'm explaining a lot of things in a way that makes sense. Uh, infantry contact, Bravo Mark, up to you guys' northeast. Top of the hill. So when I give my callouts over squad comms, I use it in reference to where a lot of my squad is. If I'm if I'm doing local comms, so I'm never gonna tell them. I'm never gonna say, okay, so he was what 169 from my position. I'm not gonna come over squad comms and say 169. I'm also getting shot from a different direction because that is not the same direction for them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my map again, looking at your map. I'm gonna orient based on where they are, and I'm gonna tell it in reference to them because that's what's gonna help them the most. I already know where he is. Uh, this BTR um, that's marked on map has almost line of sight on the defense as well. So now we're in a bad situation. Because we've got an enemy 30 mil that can pretty much overlook our entire defense. So some sort of AT needs to make its way over here. How far away is that? It's like 300 meters. Yeah, if we have any AT, if you spawn on defense, come to the um, southwest of the HAB. You can you have a perfect line of sight on the 30 mil. When you have a second squad lead, can you throw a range mark on the Bravo mark, uh, which is just northwest of our rally? Got you. Thank you. Sometimes you just got to keep asking, unfortunately. There can be a lot of things going on over, over command comms. Uh, he could not hear you the first time, not hear you the second time. Whatever it may be, I really hope this uh, Anyone wanna do a run? This field. There's still supplies in that Lodgy as well. I only dropped half of it on the Bob. When I get you up, just continue crawling southwest. I'm gonna heal you as you crawl. Actually, almost crawl okay. like 300. So turn to the right more. Your other right. Yeah, call, call, yep, yep. He's gonna still have line of sight on you. <laughs> your other right, your other. <laughs> I'm gonna stick with him right now. I, I need to, he's my most important asset on yeah, this entire team. Yep, yeah, we're trying. Uh, new range mark, uh, new range mark on Bravo. He's gonna miss that shot. He had it range for the previous. Yeah, it's 400. Should have waited. Now he's. Strategic command. Uh, uh, it's frustrating. I'm trying to get him again. He's just he's rushing his shots. He's not getting it. He, he wasn't in a good position where when he shot and he missed, he could get away. So one thing to really think about. of why you would get into a certain position is you want to position your some, yourself somewhere where if you get shot immediately, you can get hard cover. Hard cover should always be one of your priorities. If you're engaging infantry while you're in an open field like this versus taking the extra 30 seconds to get up to a wall, to get up to a building, to get up to a berm, whatever it may be, having that hard cover is always, always, always gonna be better than just engaging from concealment. And he didn't, I mean, he was just standing in the open field. We should be clear over here. Oh boys, I'm gonna do a fucking mod here and get more build. Roger. This guy needs to stay away from the... If you guys are coming off the hab, tell people to stop running southwest. This 30 mil just has direct line of sight on everyone that's running off. Uh, our vehicles are really failing us this game. These are the situations where, yes, our AT needs to hit their shots, but having AT hit a 400 meter shot while they're coming under fire. Okay, I, I don't know what he. Run. I don't know what he thought.
Uh, just kill the guy close on the west. Might have more. I gotta get down back behind the hill before that 30 mil sees me. So, I can't do a lot for my teammates at the moment because as much as I want to go back there and pick them back up, all they're going to do is just keep running off and dying. So, the most benefit I can currently give is just to be, again, an early warning sign. So, I'm out here on the west. If I, you know, I can call out when I see enemies. If I die, they know people are coming. One thing I would always, or I really recommend doing is as you're playing, when you hear a weapon, so we, especially when you're new, it's really hard to recognize weapon sounds. It's really hard to recognize where you're being shot from. In these situations where that shot just rang out over there, I know, oh, I know I have no teammates near me. Uh, he's down. He was at three or 294, about 100 meters out. So I'm paying attention to the weapon sounds. When I when I look at my map and I see I have no friendlies out to the west, I know it's an enemy shot. That's a great way to start recognizing the difference between friendly fire and enemy fire, especially at distance, because at distance is the hardest. Uh, so, I'm, I'm actually trying to bait shots right now. It's something I do whenever I'm a medic. It's not a great idea. We just had one guy go down uh, northwest of our hab. Up here at Bravo. Might have guys slinking in. Again, looking at my map, I see that a teammate went down. Roger. I, I gotta think of, I gotta think about where he did get killed from. I'm gonna actually dig this down. I'm putting mortars down on it's that. It's actually body. not a bad mine, but it's not that great of a mine. Oh come on, please start digging. It's not that great of a mine. If it's sticking out of the ground. A bit better. So I'm paying attention to my map. I see that someone went down to the north. I got to think about where he was exposed to. To know where he actually died from. So was he exposed to the south or the north? Do we have people flanking in from the north? Or did you just get sniped by someone from the south? So I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. It wasn't me prompting a question. It was very much so me speculating on what did happen. So let me know if they hit. And they're more... What? Oh, no. There's... I don't know where he actually died from. I was just pointing out that he did die. I didn't know if he got shot from the south or shot from the north. This is one of those games, and this is something I didn't explain in the video, the, the terminology video. This is where we should turtle. This is where we should stay on defense, not push out, let them come to us. So we should probably just start let them come to us and not run over the hills because we're just going to burn tickets. We just stay on defense. We can force them to us. So it's drawing back in on yourself. We have we have a you know a decent defense. If we get people out on these hills, we're gonna have a decent go of it. I'm still just kind of hanging out here on the west side because I know this road leads or is in a decent spot where they could uh, they could advance from. So these games where I'm explaining a lot of these things are not gonna be super action packed or they may not be. I've shot two people this game. But it's those games where you don't find a lot of contact. There's a reason that you don't. Uh, I would have a lot more action right now if our team was doing the correct thing. If our team was just staying back on defense, but our team's doing the incorrect thing. They're all pushing out in a in a very predict. They're just zerg rushing, to put it simply. They're pushing along this line. Because that's where they think that they need to be. Every that. single one of these guys is going to go down. They're so far away from medics that every single one of them is going to eventually give up idea. either immediately or they're going to bleed out. Indeed it would. So we're going to slowly bleed tickets away and we're going to lose the game. I can tell you that right now. Get in the chopper, get in the chopper, get in the chopper, get in the chopper. He just got a toe shot at him. If you get in that, we're, we're toast. We're fine, we're fine. Fuck it. Again, this is one of those situations where people just want to attack. My squad leader's so hell bent. I think it's funny that now I'm going back and saying some of you know joined one of the first few squads that are made. You know what? I'm the medic. I'll stick with my squad. Ah, never mind. They already left me. All right. On red vehicle. Uh, it's fine. On wheels on the river going east. Yeah, east. I see him. 
I don't want to be right in this situation. I really, really do not want to be right. I would love it if I'm wrong and these guys get an awesome attack bob up, but there's so many toes up on this map. I don't, I don't understand what he's doing. And I don't even want to picture anymore. I don't know. No. All right, guys, I'm taking squad lead. If you're dead right now, spawn on defense. When you spawn on defense, All you right. can go as far as the inner blue circle. Do not go past that. Uh, our or my squad lead just left, but probably best plan right now, if we're not already capping Laura Jarzara, is just hold back on defense. So this is not the situation I want. Uh, spawn on lower Nazrat, please. People are so content with giving up when you still have an opportunity to win. So, in this situation, it might be worth it for us to commit forward. But again, they have too many vehicles. Our vehicles are not winning that fight. We have two strikers sitting on the uh, on the repair station. Yeah, we've got people Confirm coming me. down from radio Confirm tower. My position. Roger. Okay, guys, let's reposition on this west side. Towards move mark. Can you, request, can you uh, prove it? Guys, we're just going to keep burning tickets if you keep pushing lower. We just need to stay on Nazrat. These, have these strikers moved off yet? The strikers are still just sitting here. Our vehicles haven't done quite literally anything. All right, go ahead and find yourself a position on this west side. We've got contacts up at Radio Tower, and they're moving down the hill towards us. Yep, at Bravo Mark. Who is this chopper pilot? And he's a brand new pilot that decided to start learning how to fly in a live game. So that definitely hasn't helped our case. Don't get pushed too far forward. So if you do go down, a medic can get you back up. So this one, I mean, this video is going to be a little bit of all over the place because didn't really expect my squad leader to give up that easily. Uh, okay, one contact. Oh, they're getting a machine gun bunker up. Uh, hat kit, can you pop your smokes out real quick? I need you to put a smoke in the face of that, uh, that bunker. Er I need you to put a smoke on that attack mark. Ammo crate here. Go ahead and build this up. Good smoke, good smoke. Just keep those coming. Keep those coming. Break their line of sight. Don't let them use that thing. Okay, we're going to get our own stuff up here. Yeah, we've been uh, killing them on the back of their half from about 800 meters away. Okay, someone get off to the right side of this. Yep. Hat kit, go ahead and shoot though. Hey, Keep shooting those. Away? Can you guys come here real quick, besides yep. the hat kit, and dig this up? No, I got fucked. We're getting shot from the opposite side. There's an enemy 50 cal out to the west. Enemy 50 cal out to the west. Not every game is frustration free, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes peeps just don't listen. That guy right there, I think he is. Enemy contacts, attack mark. Okay. He already gave up. Tom, can you? Oh, he didn't. I, I can I can pick him back up. Tom, can you come over here? Can you dig this up for me? I'm gonna put some smokes down. And you just try to dig up the machine gun bunker. Roger. Good job with the hat smokes. Let's try to get that bunker built up so that we can counter that a little bit. So I've, I've already accepted that we're probably going to lose this game, but it doesn't mean that our squad can't still have, you know, a good squad experience. I feel like squad leaders give up, and that's what ruins a lot of experiences for people. You know, when we had 100 tickets left, our squad leader was like, all right, guys, I'm out. This is stupid. 
Like if you create a squad, you should you should know that it might not go your way. Sixteen tickets. I, I hope this is a closer okay. game than I think it's gonna be. So as this game comes to a close, let's just do a little bit of a recap as we're just kind of throwing some fifty cal around. Let's do a recap of why we lost this game. Because so often we, we you know we play the blame game and we and we never really address why certain things happen so from the very start we didn't get to different strong points on the map um we we decided to stop early that's that's up to the squad lead's decision um not saying it was a bad decision but there's times where you don't want a full squad pausing early in the game is that a that was a friendly that they just killed i think maybe i don't know Keep throwing fire on that. Great job with the hat smokes. Just keep those up. Yep, they're trying to tell us. It's fine. Okay, he's dead off the toe. I think. Actually, maybe not. Okay, their toe should be down. No, nope, it's still not, but I hope he's dead off of it. I clearly can't focus that much. Infantry close, infantry close. Got him. Oh. So, dang. See? I don't win every single game either. There's times where it's just very frustrating experiences. Um, good try, guys. Squad leader left in the middle of it, so not a whole lot we can do. So, it's unfortunate. Uh, but we lost the game because the squad leaders were hell-bent on just charging to the attack. I mean, our squad went 3-32. and 32. Three kills. And I had one of them. I didn't, I mean, I'm not trying to say, hey, you guys need to, you know, stop dying, stop doing whatever, stop trying. Uh but I, I think I employed a very simple tactic of staying on defense, and I didn't lose any tickets because of it, but the rest of our team were just losing tickets left, right, and center. Um, but I guess the moral of the story here is it ain't over till it's over. I know that we couldn't have brought that game back. We lost it too early. Uh, our vehicles weren't in great positions. Um, but I hope some of the explanations of why things were happening made a little bit more sense to people. Um, this is just the very first video, so if I didn't get things correct, I apologize. Let me know down in the comments um, what I could do better, how I could explain things better, um, if there were certain things that I still gloss over, because those are the things I'm trying to focus on. I'm trying to focus on the things that everyone just doesn't talk about because they, they just assume that you guys know. Um, but I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I'm going to try to get one of these out maybe every week, maybe every other week. Um, because I think it's a really good way for not only new players to learn, but hey, if you're an experienced player and you're still watching up to this point, you can let me know, hey, this is what you did wrong in this situation. I don't have the, or I have the humility to admit uh, that I am not perfect. I have a lot of time in this game, but that doesn't mean that I still play the game perfectly. Um, so if you saw something that I did wrong personally, uh, please feel free to let me know. But I hope you guys did enjoy. And until next time, I'm out. Mm -hmm.